So here I have summarized all the results that we have obtained so far. Okay, so here is the formula for the S matrix. Okay, and this contains the Fourier transform of the Green's function, g tilde i m plus n. And then we also analyzed what g tilde n is and uh, we saw that in general we can write it as a product of um, two point functions okay, g tilde 2 q 1 to g tilde 2 q n. So, for each leg times the amputated Green's function okay, where this uh, g tilde of q I had defined here. Okay. So, this is Green's function in the uh, in the coordinate space and then you take a Fourier transform and g tilde q is related to g tilde 2 q q prime by this relation okay. and that is what we had seen last time. And then I also made a claim that if you look at g tilde q uh, g tilde 2 q this object okay, uh, which we are going to do later that we will show uh, we will show that it has a structure which is almost the same as that of a free propagator. So, if you had a free theory in which the particles had mass m p then you would have had i over p square okay, this should be q because I am using a q here. I, I, I over q square minus m p square plus i epsilon. Okay, but now the difference is that you also have a factor of z. Okay, and then other terms, which are which are not singular in uh, q square, going to uh, becoming equal to m p square. Okay, so uh, that's the difference. But this is almost like what you would have in free theory as as far as this term is concerned. Okay, so. Okay, so um, before we take up um, this function in a non-perturbative manner, let us assume that this result is. Um, I mean, let's just take this result and analyze this object in a perturbative manner. Okay, so that's the plan. Okay, so let's see. So we look at so we look at G tilde two Q or P, whatever you like. In perturbation theory. Okay. So here, this is two-point function. Okay, when I put a blob like this, a shaded blob, then this is a two-point function, or rather, uh, g tilde two or g tilde with one argument q okay this is this is a two point function but this is this has two argument this has only one argument and right now i'm just denoting that blob uh, that blob denotes d tilde 2 with one argument okay this is what it is and we saw that for five four theory this is sum of all these terms all these diagrams. This is order lambda diagram because you have one vertex. This is order lambda square diagram. Okay, you have such diagrams <coughs> and many more and still more. You have this also at order lambda square. Okay, this at order lambda cube <coughs> and so forth and of course you also have 
terms of this form. Okay, there are infinite number of diagrams and I am just showing some of these. Diagrams of these kind, these are called one particle or these are called one particle irreducible diagrams. Okay. So, let us look at this one. This one is not a one particle irreducible diagram. Why? Because if you cut this line here, if you cut it with a scissor, this falls apart into two diagrams. Similarly here, okay. so these are reducible, you can cut and they will fall into two, but here there is no single line which you can cut and you get two diagrams. Okay. So, the thing is that you should be able to, uh, you should upon cutting one, one line, you should be able to get two or more diagrams or two diagrams then it is reducible otherwise it is irreducible. So, these ones these first three are irreducible okay, and these ones are reducible because here also you can cut this line you get two or you can cut here you again get two diagrams. Okay. So, one particle irreducible diagram is a diagram that does not split into two diagrams by cutting a single line. Okay. So, now let us look at these irreducible diagrams. I will define one particle irreducible diagrams. So, by this blob with one p i written in it, I mean the collection of all one particle irreducible diagrams. Okay. So, you have this plus this plus and so forth. Okay. They are infinite of them. So, this blob will denote this. Okay, and but remember, when I'm uh, drawing one pi, okay, these these lines, this one and this one, okay, there is no uh, propagator uh, factor for this. So you when you you draw this, for example, when you draw this one, you don't write a propagator for this and a propagator for that. You just write what you get from this loop. Similarly, here you do not write anything for these two ends, but only what you get from this loop. These two loops. Okay, and so forth. So, these two end um, two lines, okay, these two lines you never include in 1 pi. Okay, so, that is the definition and I will denote this by i times sigma. So, here is q entering into it i times sigma of q square. Okay. So, you see whatever happens here whatever function you have this integral you will have a one loop integral here, here you will have a two loop integral. Okay. All those uh, that, that function which you get here will be a function only of q square right? because that q enters in that q enters into this loop and then other things are just dummy variables. I mean other loop integrals are going to be complete, completely integrated over and what will be left behind is a function of q square okay and that is what i am emphasizing by writing i times sigma of q square okay why i have chosen a factor of i here uh, you will uh, see the relevance of it but that's a definition i'm just going to denote it by like this okay so um, that's fine and remember that sigma of q square i times sigma of q square which is this one particle irreducible uh, diagrams the sum of them is a function of q square 
will also be a function of m square and lambda right so sigma q square is a function of q square m square and lambda right because these are the parameter m square and lambda are the parameters that enter into your calculations so of course it is going to depend on all of these but i am going to suppress m square and lambda and just write q square only q square okay now it is clear that if you look at the two point function okay this object I should have put a 2 here a superscript 2 and this is what this is first just a propagator so I write a propagator plus this plus this plus this and all other one particle irreducible diagrams so let us say first row has all those irreducible diagrams so it will have okay and um, so when i write this i have to include i sigma q square for this but now remember i am writing a two point function so these two propagators are part of it so here i write propagator for this and here i write propagator here propagator there and then 1 pi is only minus i sigma q square okay so in this expression in this line i have to include propagators okay but here it is defined one particle irreducible diagram they are defined without the propagators okay so what else now look at, let's look at this one you have you will have this variety uh, let me include one more diagram okay and others so you see this one will have a structure of the following form right here if you cut this line it falls into two and this is how these diagrams are then of course you'll have and so forth okay so let's write it down you have momentum q flowing into it so this will give you a factor of uh, a propagator okay, that gives you a propagator this will give you a propagator times a sigma i sigma times a propagator okay so a factor of sigma and a propagator here similarly a factor of sigma a propagator here a factor of sigma a propagator here so two sigmas two propagators and then one additional propagator from this and here three sigmas three propagators and an additional propagator from here so the structure is the following each of them gives sorry, not mp did i write mp before no okay this is not the physical mass this is the parameter in your theory remember that's this propagator i am writing okay so here each of them has one propagator which is on the left that is what I am taking out. Okay, I am factoring out, and then you have one plus i sigma q square times a propagator which is on the right plus so you have two factors of these. So I have already taken this one common factored it out now you have two factors of sigma they both have the same q square uh, entering into them and then these two propagators which are again identical so i write this you can remember this is m square not physical mass
okay so that's the series you have and you know that this we can sum up so this has a form of 1 plus x plus x square and so forth okay remember sigma is a function of lambda and actually it starts at order lambda because this is the first diagram and the diagram appears at order lambda so sigma has a perturbation expansion perturbative expansion and the expansion starts at order lambda okay and we are treating lambda to be small so you have uh, a, a series here which you know how to sum and this is what well, this is 1 over 1 minus okay we have i have small issue i should put a minus here so that's how i define a minus i sigma okay so this is minus i sigma that's minus i that's minus i so that gives you minus of minus i sigma Um, yeah, minus q square times, and I have missed a factor of i also here. Okay, that's the sum of the series. Okay, let's see minus times minus that gives plus and i times i is minus 1 i square is minus 1 so i get an overall minus sign here and you have this factor so these two cancel okay and you get i over q square minus m square plus i epsilon i am multiplying this factor here and then you get a minus okay this plus i epsilon i will write at the end you get minus sigma of q square plus i epsilon okay now you see why i had um, kept okay this is fine don't don't need to do anything more so you see if sigma q square gives you a positive contribution then the way we have arranged everything by including a minus i here we get a positive contribution to the mass okay the shift in the mass or the physical mass is related to this bare mass by a positive shift if sigma of q square is positive and that's the reason behind choosing those factors of minus i in front of sigma q square but you don't have to you can keep it to be plus i also okay so that's the structure of g tilde 2 of q and now we have oops okay so yeah this is fine now um, we told that um, that there is a pole in the in this propagator <coughs> in this two point function this is also called sometimes as propagator okay so one calls this two point function also as a propagator okay so if you look at the the propagator it has got a pole at the physical mass okay or equivalently if you look at the denominator it has a zero at physical mass mp so let's use that information and say that when q square is mp square the denominator vanishes okay meaning mp i should write it on the next page meaning mp square minus 
m square okay why because uh, this has a pole at physical mass okay so i have just put q square equal to mp square in this uh, in the previous expression here in the denominator and then i get this condition okay and with the help of this i can determine physical mass uh, and also the factor of z to whatever accuracy i require okay so let's do that exercise so i'll write mp square is equal to m square plus sigma as a function of mp square which says that the physical mass to the lowest order in lambda is same as the bare mass okay they are equal and the correction starts at order lambda because sigma starts at order lambda okay so that's the correction now what i'll do is i will iterate it and in here for mp square i will put m square plus sigma mp square okay so i will i can write sigma mp square as sigma of so here i am in writing m square plus or i can do something else that of course i can do but i want to do something else let take let's take sigma q square okay and expand it around do a taylor expansion around mp square no around m square so i will have sigma of m square plus q square minus m square <coughs> which gives sigma of m p square as sigma of m square plus m p square minus m square sigma prime m square okay and of course you have other terms as well higher order terms so when i take this result and put in here i get physical mass square is equal to m square plus sigma of m square plus m p square minus m square okay now you see this term is of order lambda right because sigma starts at order lambda because this is the first diagram it has okay now what is mp square minus m square if you take m square that side mp square minus m square starts at order lambda so mp square minus m square is a order lambda term what is sigma prime m square there's a derivative of this and this starts at order lambda so that derivative uh, i mean this sigma prime is also a order lambda term so this is order lambda square okay so this way you can proceed and find out what is the physical mass in terms of as a function of m and lambda okay and this is a perturbation series in lambda so this is how you can figure out what is the physical mass and to order lambda mp square is m square plus sigma m square so all you have to do is look at the one particle irreducible function uh in irreducible diagram okay calculate its lowest order and that gives you um the shift in the mass uh the shift 
and that shift together with the uh, m square gives you the physical mass square. Okay, good. So the next question will be how to obtain z, okay, as a function uh, in perturbation theory. So now I know how to get the physical mass in perturbation theory at least to order lambda. I can keep iterating this and get higher order terms as well. Okay, but let's look at um, the z factor. So here you see that um, the claim is that if you look at two point function, <coughs> then it has a pole at the physical mass okay, and the residue at this pole is z right because that is the residue I mean, it is i times z but I will not say i times z but I will just say z. Okay. So, the residue is z or i times z. So, let us find out z from the perturbation theory that is what we want to do. So, finding the residue of the pole in perturbation theory. Okay. So, what do we have? We have this is the propagator or the two point function. Remember this is also called as propagator in an interacting theory the full the, this is also referred to as propagator. So, what is the residue? So, let us look at the denominator q square minus m square minus sigma q square okay, because we are looking at the 0 of this I will not worry about i epsilon that is not relevant now. So, what is this? This I can write as q square minus what is m square? m square we have seen that it is m p square um, should have been m p square m p square minus sigma of m p square right because to the lowest order m square is same as m p square. So, m square is m p square minus sigma m p square ok that is what I want to write. Okay, that is what your m square is and then minus and I do an expansion around m p square physical mass. Okay, I should have done something else, but nevertheless let us proceed with this because it is perturbation theory it will not matter at least to this order. So, this cancels and we have q square minus m p square that is I, what I take common and I get 1 minus sigma prime m p square. Okay. This is to the lowest order. Is that fine? 1 minus sigma prime evaluated at m p square. Okay, that is fine. So, what have I obtained? I have obtained that to the lower to order lambda this is same as i over q square minus m physical square times 1 over 1 minus sigma prime of m p square <coughs> which is 1 plus sigma prime of m p square. Okay, because I have put in the numerator and we are doing a perturbation in lambda. Okay. So, you see that I mean of course, and there are other terms. So, you see that you, uh, you can obtain z if you calculate sigma and take a derivative and evaluate it at q square equal to m p square. 
which is same as to the lowest order it is 1 plus sigma prime m square okay so this is a function of lambda n m okay so we can uh, figure out what the residue is from perturbation theory okay i want to make a remark here and the remark is the following so um in so let's look at this this is in free theory okay and what is this this is g2 xx prime an interacting theory you have this object okay which we denote again by the same symbol <coughs> and here if you write this in in terms of g tilde uh, i should write q now okay q dot x minus x prime q then you know what that g tilde 2 of q is okay in this free theory g tilde 2 of q is i over q square minus m square plus i epsilon okay and remember in free theory m square is the physical mass okay but if you do the same thing here okay i'm being a bit um, okay let's proceed Okay, here the leading behavior is near the near the uh, when q square is near mass shell, then the leading behavior is this, and let me denote that by this vector. Okay, now of course there are other terms. Now what you can do is if you redefine the fields here. see the normalization of fields is not fixed you can choose to normalize it differently right so if i take instead of phi i take phi r as the fields okay and multiply a factor of z here or rather square root of z then what happens then if you do the same thing on this correlation function will be okay which is just z times the original correlation uh, the correlation function in terms of this phi r fields and now if you calculate g tilde 2 in with this normalization of fields then your g tilde 2 will not involve z right because you have got a z here and that z will cancel okay so you see that you can get rid of z by choosing a different normalization of the fields and that is why this factor of z is also called field strength renormalization so here let me write the first this answer then for this case if you calculate g tilde 2 of q then it will its leading behavior will be i over q square minus m physical square plus epsilon without a factor of z plus other terms okay and that that, that z disappears because i have changed the normalization of the field okay 
and that is why z is called field strength renormalization and sometimes you also add constant okay or renormalization constant or field strength renormalization renormalization constant okay we'll stop here and see you in the next video